Here are some quick notes about how we'd implement a Fibonacci heap. First thing to ask ourselves is, what are the operations that we need to perform on the data structure? Slicing a node out of a tree as part of decrease key, we need to be able to add a node to the root list. We need to be able to merge two trees. That happens during the cleanup phase after popmin. And we need to be able to iterate through a root's children. This happens during popmin. So how can we make sure we implement all of these efficiently? Here's a simple data structure that would work. We could say, let each node have pointers, both a pointer to a parent and to a child. Let it point to a left sibling and a right sibling. I won't go through all the details of the operations, but it's fairly easy to see that all of these can be done in O of one time, except of course iterating through a node's children, which is O of number of children. In addition to these pointers, obviously, we should store the key for each node. Each node also has to store a flag saying whether or not it's a loser. And also, we might as well store the degree of a node. This is useful for the cleanup phase of pop min, where we want to repeatedly merge trees of equal degree. So we'll just keep a running total of the degree so we don't need to go and count all the children. So, for example, if we see this Fibonacci heap, with four nodes, it might be represented like this. We're storing here each list of siblings as a circular doubly linked list. This makes it easy to slice a child out. You just need to repair the links of each of its neighbors. Okay, so that's about how we support all the operations on the Fibonacci heap nodes. But a bigger question from the point of view of software architecture is this question. If I want to decrease the key of a certain node, how do I refer to the node? Do I need to look it up somewhere? How expensive is that? Here are some lines extracted from Dijkstra's algorithm. And let's run through them and think, what are the typical operations that we need to perform? In a graph, each vertex has a collection of neighbors. We need to be able to iterate through the neighbors. Sometimes the way Dijkstra's algorithm works is it will pick out one of those neighbors and it will say, hey neighbor, decrease your key. So given a vertex, I need to decrease its key in the Fibonacci heap. Another operation I need to support is popmin. I need to be able to go to the priority queue, call popmin to get the item with the smallest key. But then that item, I need to be able to treat that item as a graph vertex, for example, to iterate through its neighbors in the graph. So actually, there are two different sets of relationships between vertices. On one hand, I've got a graph made up of vertices and each vertex may have several neighbors. And on the other hand, I've got a Fibonacci heap. And for implementation purposes, we want each node in the Fibonacci heap to maintain pointers to its siblings, parent, child. A given node, I've got to see it simultaneously as a vertex in a graph and as a node in a Fibonacci heap. So how do we achieve this? In other words, how do we design a class structure for using a Fibonacci heap called Dijkstra's algorithm? Let's just start off with an object-oriented representation of a graph. Here's uh, uh, one possibility. I'm imagining a graph class the main method of this graph class is compute shortest paths from, and you give it a start vertex. But each vertex will maintain, for example, a list of its neighbors with associated edge weight. If we're running Dijkstra's algorithm, we'd want to store the distance from the start vertex. And if we're using Dijkstra's algorithm to return shortest paths rather than just distances, we'd also need to retain some routing information. Okay, so this section of code is purely about how we would store the graph, the vertices and the neighbors. If I want to also say each vertex is simultaneously a node in a priority queue, we could achieve it like this. The main change is here, where I'm saying for every vertex, I want to store another field. I'll call it PQN for priority queue node. And this extra field will have type fib heap node. Fib heap node is a class which maintains all the fields that you need for a priority queue. Okay, and a further thing to notice is 
I want each priority queue to have pointers to other nodes, for example, parent, child and sibling relationships. And I want those pointers to be pointers to vertex objects. For example, when I call popmin, I want to look at the Fibonacci heap node, I want to follow links in the Fibonacci heap, and I want to get a vertex out of it at the end. So the way we'd achieve that in an object-oriented design is we'd make the fib heap node class generic. Here I've defined Fibonacci heap of t, a generic class, and I'll make it so that each fib heap node has pointers of type t. So this is the way that you can have an inner object like the fib heap node, which points to an outer object like a vertex. Here's an entirely different software design. Let's say that we'll store an ID for each vertex and we'll use ID as a common reference. IDs might be integers or strings or whatever key you, you want. For the graph, I'd store a collection of vertices and neighbors. And additionally, I'll give each vertex an ID field. And additionally, I'll store a hash map which says, given an ID, how do I re retrieve the vertex object for that ID? Likewise, with the Fibonacci heap, I'll say that each node in the heap has an ID. And I'll store a hash map which says, given an ID, how do I look up the Fibonacci heap node for that ID? And so, for example, the popmin function will return an ID. Dijkstra's algorithm would call popmin. It would get an ID. It would use the, the graph object to look up what's the vertex object for that ID. So these are two totally different software architectures. We could implement it using a class-oriented ar architecture with a using relationship. Each vertex object uses a priority queue node object. And this requires generics to do it properly. Or alternatively, we could have a decoupled design making heavy use of hash tables and keys, and it would be our code which is managing the key space. It's interesting to think through what are the advantages and disadvantages of these two architectures. It really depends on the larger context within which you're building this system.